good old cup of coffee? I'll drink my coffee. So folks, I went to go watch Eternals last Friday, and guess what? I realized they don't do the super speed effect anymore in a lot of characters. And you know what? It was honestly a pleasure to watch Makari's super speed effect. I think the way that they did it was absolutely phenomenal, and we're gonna go recreate that right now in Final Cut Pro 10. So there's a few things that you need to know before getting started on this effect. One, you need to record a clean slate for almost everything, literally almost everything. What's a clean slate? That is the portion of your clip that's literally just environment based. There is nothing happening. There's no subject. There's just nothing in the frame. Just push record and get out. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Secondly, with your clean slate, you wanna make sure that you're in an area that doesn't have a lot going on. There's not a lot of moving cars, moving objects, moving people, pretty much moving anything. You want the area to be as dead as possible. That way you're not gonna screw up continuity. So you wanna make sure that your clean slate location is as deserted as possible. Why? Because anything that moves within your object when doing this effect can literally screw everything up. Even the tiniest thing, okay? So make sure you're in a nice, clean area. When you're on a film set, everybody knows that this is about to happen and extras are timed, actors are timed, cars are timed. Like, they literally time everything. If you're just a run and gun filmmaker, like myself here at the Raw Shooters Club, you don't have access to these kinds of things, so you gotta keep it in mind. If it's not in your mind, you're gonna mess up royally. So now we have our clip in place, fantastic. What you wanna do next is go to the portion of the clip where you're just about to take off, and that last frame, I want you to select the blade tool and just trim it, done, that's it. Now that you have that one tiny frame selected, click it, go up to the retiming tool, click that, and click hold. Did you do it? Fantastic. So after that's all said and done, what you wanna do next is select that clip and drag it over your clean plate. Once your frame is above the clean slate, select your draw mask tool and just draw a rough mask around your object or subject. Clearly the subject was me and I'm assuming it's either gonna be you or an actor or actress. Once your masking and your feathering is done, the next step is to add a directional blur and you wanna add it in the direction that the subject is moving in. So once you have your motion blur selected, the last and final step is to click the transform tool and you wanna duplicate the clip a couple times and with the transform tool, just constantly you know, shift that blur over and over and over again until it's pretty much out of frame and it looks like this. In order to get the yellow light streaks like they do in the movie Eternals, we have a subscription to productioncrate.com and we use their lightning effects. Unfortunately, I don't remember off the top of my head how much we're paying for this subscription, but I can tell you guys it does not break the bank. It's roughly about 40 to 50 bucks a month and it's fantastic. It has everything from like magic powers to lightning to thunder to smoke, clouds, dust, you name it, muzzle flashes. Production Crate has such an amazing library and has so many tools for literally anything that you're using. Final Cut, Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects, so on and so forth. I highly recommend you get it. That was it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. I hope you guys learned something. And with that being said, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'm Terry from the Raw Shooters Club and we will see you on the next video. Peace.